So uh, we've already touched on, on this, uh, but th the next phase is, is obviously uh, what are recommendations uh, for maintenance. Uh, Paul already emphasized that, uh, for example, in the Dana-Farber uh, study, uh, as compared to the IFM 2009 uh, trial, uh, I mean, maintenance uh, can be a very important uh, aspect. And so uh, slide number 17, uh, I, I talk about, well, what are our current approaches, uh, and I think uh, the answer to that is that we uh, do, uh, in general, recommend uh, maintenance therapy, uh, primarily with uh, Revlimid, uh, for patients who might have uh, the uh, higher risk features such as uh, 414 uh, and 17P minus, uh, and, and possibly even uh, 1Q plus, I guess, combine uh, Revlimid with a proteasome inhibitor a key issue for patients that, that comes to me all the time is um, modifying uh, the uh, maintenance uh, because of side effects, including just day-to-day -day intolerance or reduction in blood counts, particularly uh, white blood cell count with perhaps uh, uh, infections, upper respiratory or, or urinary infections. And so, the, the issue of uh, stopping maintenance for intolerance, and as we were just talking about, uh, related to achieving an MRD negative status, uh, does uh, become an important uh, discussion point. Uh, and so there are quite a few uh, issues that come up, uh, both for doctors and for patients related to uh, the use of, a, of an ongoing uh, maintenance uh, regimen. And so, uh, maybe I'll open up this for discussion. Maybe, Rafat, you would like to comment first in terms of your uh, current practice, in terms of the, the choice of treatment, and then the uh, duration of the treatment that you use uh, for maintenance. Yeah, you know, obviously, we, we try to divide the patient into what we call standard risk and high risk. Um, you know, yep. high risk based on cytogenetics, if they have, you know, the P17 deletion. High risk for what? Short, you know, time without uh, progression. Um, you know, so for these patients, we tend to use both the immunomodulated drugs and proteasome inhibitor, Revlimid plus Belcade or Revlimid plus Nenlaro. And uh, for standard risk patients, we use, you know, Revlimid as, you know, the vast experience around the world showed that it's beneficial in, um, uh, you know, uh, delaying progression improvement, improvement of patients' overall survival. Um, but I, again, I mean, I think we always, with any treatment, you know, you have to have an ongoing assessment of risk and benefit and side effect. I think it's very important that you know you pay attention to the fatigue, to the drop in the counts, the diarrhea, whatever you know side effect that may occur during you know the treatment. You have to try to manage it as effectively as possible. At some point, you may need to stop the treatment, give a treatment holiday, resume treatment. I mean, the question is that do you need you know maintenance forever? I think I would love that you know question to be answered. Uh, in the era of novel combinations, you know, such as including the monoclonal antibody. And, you know, now we start doing clinical trials with monoclonal antibody in the maintenance setting. Do you need to, you know, can you stop after two years? Um, you know, we need to do the trials. I mean, I think we owe it to our patient to do the right trials where maybe, you know, there's non-ongoing therapy forever, you know. Maybe after right. two or three years, we start saying, okay, if you keep this, markers, you know, whatever it's MRD negative, six months, 12 months, 24 months, see a complete remission at six months in addition to the MRD negative. Is that a good thing at six months, 12 months, 24 months? Hopefully we'll have those trials that will help us answer that questions. But today I think for standard risk, Revlimid alone, for high risk, Revlimid, Wuznin, Laro, duration is always, you know, um, as long as you can, but also address the side effect profile adjusts accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, we would uh, 
uh, echo these comments. Uh, any additional comments uh, from, from anyone? Let me just say, uh, there's a question that came in, uh, which doesn't come up a lot, uh, related to the development of reduced levels of uh, testosterone. Is, is that something uh, that, that you see as a side effect or concern that requires attention? Yeah, Brian, it, obviously we see that in, 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 in men after, men after transplant, yeah, after transplant we definitely see that. Uh, as a side effect of lenalidomide though, um, I, I, I'm not, I, we certainly see thyroid deficiency, um, but right. low level testosterone from lenalidomide, no. Um, to typically testosterone uh, deficiency occurs post-transplant. And that, that would bring me just on to another comment because I completely agree with Rafat. I think the important point is that maintenance strategies initially were built from the post-transplant setting. So because of challenges with tolerance of, uh, of, of maintenance post-transplant because of suppression of blood counts and so forth, we typically have said lenalidomide alone post-transplant in standard risk, as Rafat says, and then add a proteasome inhibitor in high risk. Interestingly enough, in the non-transplant setting, and certainly our practice um, to continue the lenalidomide and the proteasome inhibitor in a maintenance fashion if you do not use high dose therapy. Um, because um, with the uh, rationale behind this is obvious that you're not side to reduce the tumor in the same way with high dose melphalan. Um, and therefore, if you're going to continue with a maintenance strategy, it makes sense to be uh, a little more uh, proactive in our opinion. And therefore we, we do do that. Now, of course, if you're high risk, it's a given. But even in standard risk patients, depending on tolerance, we will uh, pursue that. One very interesting thing we've learned from the determination trial, which is this early versus late transplant study, is that actually post-transplant, it's sometimes more difficult to deliver dose and schedule of maintenance than it is in the non-transplant setting, which is an important finding in a prospective randomized fashion. Right, right, very, very important. 